Hey, yeah, I got one of these doll combination locks from AliExpress. Now, I haven't played around with this one at all. Just put this over here. And what I want to show you, there's got the combination on the back, but I'm not going to look. I want to show you how I might get into this. Um, these are the cheap ones where it's got that sort of diamond shape with a mark. Sometimes you've got a red thing there, sometimes they haven't. With these sort of ones, when you tension the shackle and turn, they don't go click, click, click. Um, unlike the more expensive Avis ones, it, it will click into certain positions. And also this word lock goes click, click, but when you tension the shackle, it'll it'll get stuck in certain positions and these ones are not like that you tension the shackle it doesn't get stuck it just it's harder to move so these ones we use a different technique the first thing before decoding i want to look at with these ones is to shim it using a shim okay using a, a shim it's a well-known exploit it even works on some more expensive locks, although the modern one into these Avis's say that they're shim proof, but I I'll, I'll give that to a test when I get one. This one, this word lock said it was shim proof, but as you know in my video a couple of videos ago, I was able to shim this open as well. So they lied about that advertising for this one. So I'm going to you know how the shackle goes up and down. Going to put the shim in here. Going to put the shackle up and down while wiggling that in. And it opens. So it's that quick. And this, this works relatively fast on these types of locks. Now what happens if you don't have one of these expensive, thin and tough shims? Well these locks are so cheap, they've got quite a little play, quite quite a lot of play and, and a gap there. So if I get a little bit of plastic that I cut from a yogurt container, hmm, gee that's even um, maybe a little bit too soft, but what I'll do, I'll try and make a, a rough homemade shim really really a really rough one um, wow wow that's that's so rough um, I'm going to try and put this down here Um, let's cut off that bump a little bit. No idea if if this will work. But the the gap is so wide, it might 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 try and get this down there. Pull the shackle up and down and try and force this in. It seems to go in. So I can manipulate it. Okay, so a bit of plastic and you can do the same thing. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you is to decode it. Okay, so I'm going to turn it to the right a few times. Now, when I, let's say I start on zero, when I tension the shackle, uh, it turns and first number it stops at is about 38. So what I'm going to do is release tension, go to 38, and then tension again. Okay, it doesn't want to come, come out. Hmm, maybe that's that will be our um, third number. I don't know. 
I'm going to go past that. See, see where it goes. To. Okay, see how it clicked. Did you hear? I mean, did you hear how it clicked? About thirteen or fourteen, and I had tension on the whole time. I'm going to go the other way. Okay, so, and it's open. So the combination was something like 38, 14, 38. Okay, um, and if you look at the back, yep, that's close enough. The to tolerances on this lock is bad enough. Okay, 36, 14, 39. But what I did was close enough. So the next thing I'm going to do is with these locks, you can decode it going to the right. Let's pretend you didn't have any luck decoding it to the left. And sometimes it's just impossible because, well, not impossible, but the manufacturing tolerances mean that. You know how I, I stopped at 38 because it seemed to move there and not go on with tension in the shackle? Sometimes you don't get that with these locks. And... You know how when I was turning it this way, I got a click at about 14. Sometimes you don't get that with these locks. It's just the manufacturing tolerances um, mean that sometimes it's just different. And so let's say you've got nowhere decoding it this way. Let's try it the other way. So I'm going to turn it to the right several times. Tension it. Okay, let's see where it wants to go. Okay, it wants to go at about 2, so I'm going to release tension. Go to 2, and I'm going to tension and turn. Okay, it's free to turn, it's just going turn, turn, turn. Sort of hits about, sort of gets tight about here. The last number will always be the same if, if you know the last number, but that's not doing anything. And it, there wasn't a click, it's just tight to turn. Okay. So it looks as though that's, that's uh, not the number. So if I turn it to the right several times again, and I'm going to go past that too. I'm going to tension it again and see where it next wants to stop at. Okay, sort of clicked at six, five or six. I'm going to release tension, go to that five or six, and tension it again and start turning. Not 26. Go past that. Okay, so it seems to stop at 30 with extension. Go past 30. Right, you heard that click and the shackle came out a little bit at about 19. So 30, 19, go back here. And the lock's open. Okay, so that took a little bit longer, but it was good to show that you have to test potential numbers that are hard to move past, or sometimes it's not just hard to move past, sometimes it's a click, and you move past them without tension, and you just keep on going to the next one, the next one. So turning it this way, I got lucky, I opened it fast, but turning it, doing it the other way, that um, whatever the combination was, like 30, 19, 39, that's the, uh, that, that took longer, but sometimes if you don't have success one way, you can do it the other way. Thanks.